The restoration of the old Wheeler Mansion in Orange, Massachusetts has been a long haul. I'll eventually do this part of the ceiling um, once I finish the bathrooms upstairs. But the end is in sight and the results are nothing short of magnificent. I wanted something that you walk in and you're like, wow. I wanted something that people wanted to have their photographs taken in. So I had to like channel in that movie industry prop sort of thing, like make it Instagram worthy, go a little bold. Cindy Butler knows a thing or two about the entertainment industry. This couch was designed by Jane Whelan of the Go-Go's. And then when she moved to Costa Rica, she gave it to me. For 24 years, Butler had been running with musicians, actors, and writers in Los Angeles. But she was looking for a change when she came across a website listing a decrepit old mansion for sale in a town she knew nothing about thousands of miles away. I found it on Sunday. He called me back on a Monday. On a Tuesday, he said, you have to bid on it today. Butler's $150,000 bid won the day. So she moved across the country with her daughter and got right to work. I was super excited. I'm one of those people that can't sit still. I wake up and I go, what can I do today? What should I work on? Which room should I work on? Cindy has documented her progress on Instagram, gaining 17,000 followers along the way. The goal? To turn this Beau Arts gem into an event venue and B&B. &B. Unsurprisingly, her arrival raised eyebrows in this little town north of the Quabbin Reservoir. I was a little bit like, why? Why are you coming to Orange <clears throat> after living in California? Tom Smith of Witty's Funeral Home and chair of the Orange Board of Selectmen. I was looking at it like, wow, you're taking on a lot. Well, it's just like night and day. It's become uh, a, a show place, really. Rose Marie Tomes, who owns the Rose Cottage Bed and Breakfast, is impressed with her new neighbor because I know there were quite a few men who said, too much for me, <laughs> and here she took it on. For her part, Butler was taken aback by the reception she received in town. Whenever I'm outside, people would just stop and say thank you. And I was like, you're welcome. I had no idea the mansion was so important to people here. To return the kindness, Butler opened her home to host the town's annual Meet Santa Christmas event. People were lined up down the street, and that was the first time that I was like, wow, people do really want to see this place. Since then, Butler has hosted an Easter egg hunt, a pumpkin festival, and a multi-night Hogwarts celebration. Paranormal events are in the offing as well. Butler says there are some very active spirits at work in the mansion. Whenever anything happens, I will now talk to them. What's clear is that Butler's revival of the Wheeler Mansion has lifted the spirits of this old mill town. The town loves her, honestly, for what she's done, because it's amazing. We were all afraid of that big, beautiful house would just be torn down. And if she hadn't stepped in when she did, we wouldn't have, we would have lost it. She's very amazing lady who's worked so hard and really has helped the little town of Orange. A spirit of theatricality is also afoot in this castle in East Haddam, Connecticut, built by William Gillette. What he's most known for is uh, portraying Sherlock Holmes. William Gillette made his fortune in the late 1800s, playing Sherlock Holmes in theaters across the country. He built his castle as his retirement home. Lynn Wilkinson is with the Friends of Gillette Castle, now a Connecticut State Park. He played an intimate role in the design and construction, and as you can see, he was sort of a crazy guy. Indeed, the castle is filled with ingenious touches, like the wooden door latches. This one, when you move it, it goes up and down. The light switches are made of wood as well. We believe at the time people were afraid to touch metal and electricity. A widower, Gillette lived here alone, 
unless you count his 17 cats. One of the things he designed was this little table that has little cat toys. They can play and enjoy themselves by knocking those around. Then there was the small-scale railroad that Gillette Goodbye. built in the forest surrounding the castle. It may be gone now, but the castle stands tall as a monument to one man's ingenuity. I think of it as incredibly important for William Gillette's legacy. There's nothing like it anywhere. Mm. And many of the Sherlock Holmes trademark objects actually come from William Gillette himself. Right, not from the author, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but from Gillette mm -hmm. himself, like the deerstalker cap and the curved pipe so. you always see. Those are from Gillette. They are nowhere to be mentioned in the books at all. And back to the Wheeler Mansion. It was built originally by John Wheeler. He made his fortune in sewing machines. A very nice story. All right, coming up, the house that Yankee Candle built.